I think we've all at one time wanted a meter that can just do everything and do it well. Now the question often is, you know, when we try to do everything all at once, we often lose out on something. But man, if we could have a multimeter that could also function as an oscilloscope and function as a waveform generator, that would be pretty nice. This meter is supposed to be do ever. So let's see how it does. All right, so I'm gonna check out this new meter that I just got. It's an oscilloscope, a multimeter, and a waveform generator. So I'm gonna check this thing out. It's pretty affordable for what it can do. So I really wanna compare it to, to test it out a little bit, see how well the oscilloscope feature actually works compared to maybe a higher end oscilloscope over there. So let's get started. Okay, first thing first, let's unbox this thing. Decent probes with removable probe covers, which is a nice plus. Pretty sharp, I just poked myself. Leads are a little flimsy to be honest. All right, so it's a little smaller than I thought it would be. Okay, to start out, look, I have a lot of meters. If you wanna check out my video on an in-depth review on multimeters, it'll be right up here. But that being said, I don't wanna to spend too much time just focusing on the multimeter settings. I do wanna show the basics. So if we go over here, first off, the meter itself, you can tell it's just a little different than your traditional meter. Um, for instance, they've lumped in resistance, continuity, uh, diodes, all in the same uh, function. I don't have a problem with that necessarily. It depends on what you're using it for. I think the display is something that would be a transition for a lot of people. It's almost like a dark mode display. I'm not sure if that was a, a design choice to say battery. So let's go ahead and try to get a resistance measurement. So we know we can measure resistance. That's obviously one of the basic functions of a multimeter. I can go ahead and try voltage as well while we're at it. Now I'm not gonna use this meter to measure current right now. First of all, anytime you'd mix a current measurement function and an oscope function, I'm already a little bit nervous, um, you know, as far as oscilloscope safety goes. And now the good thing is this is an isolated, you know, scope. You know, a lot of times you have an oscilloscope, it's gonna be connected to ground. And so you gotta worry about uh, making connection to ground. This isn't gonna have that issue because it's essentially isolated since it's running off battery. But I'm gonna go ahead and ignore that, those functions. But you do have a microamps, a milliamps, and a 10 amps uh, function setting there. Um, and you gotta be aware of if you're in the 10 amps or the milliamps over here. Okay, so now I wanna get this meter into oscope mode or oscilloscope mode. Uh, how do I do that? There's no noticeable function on this dial. So what do I do? Well, I gotta hold the auto button for two seconds. So a little bit of a hidden menu there, not something you know very easily, unless you read those directions that we threw out not too long ago. Now, okay, you might be thinking, great, this looks like an O-scope radical, but there's nothing showing up. Why is that? Where's my auto set? Where's my auto scale? What do I do? Okay, so now once you're in the oscilloscope mode, you can hit auto and it should try to auto detect where the signal is, right? So it's gonna try to figure out settings that are gonna give me my signal. Right now I have, you can see channel two set to 200 volts. So when I'm generating a 200 millivolt peak to peak signal, I'm gonna think that's probably an issue, but let's see if it, let's see if it finds it. All right, so I am getting my wave there. I am getting a 220 millivolt peak to peak signal right now. Now I can go in and try to zoom in a bit on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and select voltage, make the voltage division a little smaller here. Oh, I can't, I can't actually go any smaller. So already you can start to see one of the limitations of this meter is I, I you know, the smallest voltage division I can do is 500 millivolts, which, you know, that's a pretty large signal. And so it depends on what you're gonna use this for. If you're gonna use this for larger voltages, things above one volt, this will do great. If you're gonna be looking at really small signals in the, in the millivolt range, this may not be the best meter for your application. And that's okay, you know, for this meter, it's cost, you're gonna have some limitations, okay? You can get this meter if you, you know, I, I think it sells for retail for around 100. This company actually gave me a discount code to share with you all. 
you can save 25 bucks. So check that out in the video description. So for $75 to get a meter, for to get any just multimeter in general, that's a, not a bad deal. Um, but this one actually comes with a little bit extra functionality. So not bad. I think it's a pretty reasonable price for the meter you're getting. Is it gonna be the same as this Fluke? Well, no, but it also costs you know less than half of this thing. And obviously this is gonna be better for a lot of applications, but it doesn't have, you know, this Gotcha Fix has a ton of functions that this thing doesn't have. So it just depends on what you're using the meter for. Uh, this will probably do quite a few applications that uh, will be just fine. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and change the amplitude here so we can not be at the, the lower range so much of this meter. All right, so we'll go to two volts peak to peak. Um, you know, right now the VPP down here is being measured at 1.98. So pretty close, seems reasonable there. Uh, frequency, we got one kilohertz spot on, one kilohertz, so that looks good. Um, so it's a, you know, a pretty neat little tool to have, really. I mean, <laughs> I've not seen, you know, I've seen a lot of those portable USB uh, type oscopes that you can get, and I'm not too big a fan of those, but, you know, adding that functionality to a little portable handheld multimeter, you know, it's kind of cool. It's kind of clever. Like I said, it's not going to be great for all applications. If you're going to be measuring small signals, really you know, high frequency signals, this is not going to do the job. But for a lot of simple things, you know, peak detection, some sensors that are sending out signals, troubleshooting your microcontroller, uh, as long as you're dealing with those higher voltage, lower frequency signals, you'll be fine. All right. So the next thing I wanted to check, you know, is this thing a decent little function generator? Right now I'm generating a square wave, measuring my square wave with my oscilloscope over here. So let's go ahead and see if we can change some of the parameters, see what some of our limitations might be. So I'm gonna guess the, the frequency um, is only gonna have, you know, certain settings. You, you know, you got certain distinct settings that you can do here, 50 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz, 500 hertz, 200 hertz. So obviously there's a, there's a limit on what this function generator can do. But, you know, if you just need to send out a one kilohertz signal and change it, vary it, maybe test the circuit, that's not, that's not so bad. Let's check out our uh, waveform itself. You got three, three options there, a sine, a square, and a ramp. And then for duty cycle, okay, so we can change the duty cycle of that wave. Let's go ahead and change that to 80, perfect. All right, uh, similar to the, the frequency setting, there's only distinct voltages that we're able to select from that menu. Um, obviously, if you wanna generate a higher than three or a lower than 100 millivolt peak to peak wave, then this is not the function generator for you, right? This is a really pretty you know, basic function generator that's only gonna be able to do a couple things, uh, but sometimes that's all you need. And so, you know, this might be able to get you to get, you might be able to get away with something like this depending on your applications. Is it a particularly good function generator? Generator? Well, no, of course not. If you want a real function generator that's gonna do all the bells and whistles, well, this is gonna cost you like $3,000. So, you know, is it fair to compare this key site over here? Uh, no, you know, that they're never gonna be, be comparable, right? The amount of control I can get with this key site, the amount of things I can do. But, right, this is a bench top waveform generator that costs thousands of dollars. This is a handheld function generator that costs less than $100. So obviously there's gonna be limitations. The key is understand your application, understand the applications of the meter before you go out and you buy something like this and it doesn't do the job that you need it to do. If you understand what it does, you understand your needs and it fits those, this might be a good fit, it might be a good solution. Okay, so hopefully you got a little taste of how that meter works. Like I said, pretty interesting little meter has a lot of functionality, may not be able to work in every situation for sure, but for the price point, you know, not a bad little meter. And, uh, you know, depending on what you're doing, what you're using it for, 
you may want to check it out. So I know we haven't been posting a whole lot of videos lately, but I have three projects that are working right now. One of them is this breadboard based SPO2 sensor. We have a temperature simulator that I'm working on and we have a really exciting soldering project that I can't wait to show you. So if you want to stay tuned, make sure to check out, subscribe to our channel, check us out. We've got some new stuff coming hopefully soon. Thanks.